Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here and thank you very much for tuning in today. And I wish I could tell you more about what you're going to see in this particular video, but there's a lot of work that I plan to do to this 2003 Honda Pilot and it will probably be split up into several videos. So this introduction, well, you may or may not see it, but anyway, my intentions are to uh, work on the front of the vehicle. You might remember this is the same uh, Pilot that I replaced the rear suspension and did the structural repair and all that stuff on. Now it's time to turn my attention to the front and specifically I need to replace the automatic transmission which has failed. I have a new unit from, well, a remanufactured unit from Go Powertrain. I'm excited about this guy. It came with a new transmission cooler and everything. That That's gonna be pretty cool. I'm also gonna be servicing the engine, uh, replacing the timing belt, water pump, spark plugs, uh, anything else the engine needs as far as service goes, probably a valve adjustment will get thrown in there. I'm gonna replace the front struts, the front lower control arms, the front stabilizer links, and well, there's probably some things that I'm forgetting about in there. Anyway, that's a whole lot of work that's not going to fit into one video, so as I said, I'm going to split it up into several. Also, you may hear some construction going on outside because that's exactly what's happening. They're building a new bridge, they're widening the road, so please uh, forgive those interruptions as they happen. There's one now. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get started on this work on this 2003 Honda Pilot. Given the amount of work that I'm doing, my intention is to take all of this and drop it out the bottom along with the subframe, and I've made a platform to drop this all onto. Uh, you may have seen the episode where I built this. Anyway, we're gonna put that to use uh, to drop this cradle with this engine and transmission attached out the bottom. This is very similar to what I did with the Honda Odyssey not long ago. And uh, well, it made it nice and easy because with the Odyssey, the computer and all the major electrical connections were here. That's not the case with this. Uh, it looks like this harness goes back down through the firewall there. If this is like other vehicles of this vintage, there is probably a short harness that runs down to the computer underneath the center console. And I'll probably have to disconnect everything at that location. I'm also gonna to need to go inside to disconnect the power steering rack from the steering column inside the vehicle. So I'm gonna to have to go inside and disconnect a few things before we uh, get involved with what's happening out here. I've reinstalled the front wheels, lowered it down on the ground, disconnected the negative battery cable, and pushed it back so that I can open this door more fully while it's on the lift to gain better access to here. Which, as I suspected, uh, the computer, you'll be able to see a top corner of it is right there. So that right there is the computer and the electrical connection and that harness is what we're going to have to remove in order to get the engine transmission out the way I'm hoping to. And while we're here, I'm going to remove this cover and we will disconnect the steering column from the power steering rack, which is right down in here. And this handy steering wheel holder, I'm going to get the steering wheel straight, will help keep the steering wheel in position while I do all this work. Now there are three plastic rivet type nuts. You can unscrew them or you can just pull them out, but they look like that. Another one down there, another one there. Thank you light for being a jerk. Then there's this metal clip. And there's another one higher up. It unclips on there and then the top of it splits open. And you should be able to pull it right off. And that reveals what we're after. You'll need to remove this lower nut, it's 10 millimeter, and loosen this top, or, top one. And you'll be able to take this whole U-joint and slide it up on the shaft. Once that's all loose, you should be able to just pick it up off of there and you can set it aside. I've already disconnected the negative battery cable, now the positive. I had these loose from before, I actually had to replace this battery. This plastic cover will just be in the way. Wow, 
that's a heck of a heat shield. <laughs> it almost seems like that would have been easier if I'd have done that after removing the tube. I'm already finding leftover fasteners from the previous person who worked on it. Yay! I love that. These are 10. Eight for the air box, and there's one, two, three, four of those. Don't be surprised if some of these are broken, because three of mine are. I only have one holding this in. I had a vacuum line back here going down to fuel pressure regulator. This air filter looks pretty new. I'll probably reuse it. Very much like to get the battery tray out of here now. There are two 12 millimeter fasteners, one here and one here, but there are also two underneath going in this way, underneath on the support. I don't believe you have to remove the lower ones completely. I think you just need to loosen them enough so you can pull this up off of here. I just like having that additional access. It allows me to get into more of this area. You'll notice that there's also a couple of uh, electrical connectors that are kind of clipped to it. So these have a little plastic tab on the back that you pull up on. You pull up on that and it'll release. It's fairly typical of a lot of these. And here's another one under here. And you can slide it off its perch. And there's a small fuse box and a couple of other harness connections. If you're having difficulty with these, WD-40 really helps. Just put a little bit on the plastic. Seems to help them release better. Or you could just take this 10 millimeter out. That could also work. Normally there's a splash shield under here that I'd need to remove. I'm gonna be putting a new one in. There's also normally a splash shield that goes in this inner fender liner area. Uh, that comes down, well, farther than this was. With those things out of the way, you should be able to, like that fastener for the uh, lower part of the battery box is right, or battery tray is right here. And then the other one is right up here. So they are easier to access from underneath. And it looks like at least uh, this one on this side needs to come all the way out. I'll be the first to admit that things like this can be a total pain in the backside. You saw the stuff that I removed before I finally gave up and came under here. I think in the end, it's worth it. Better access to stuff. This one back here isn't inspiring much confidence at all. Uh, this one in the back doesn't need to come all the way out. I'm gonna do something that I've done in the past with situations like this. So this is my air hammer with a pointy end on it. And since access is limited, uh, once the transmission is out, it's no problem. These are also 12 up here, and there's just two of them. That took longer than it needed to. It does open up space though, like a lot of it. The name of this game is to basically disconnect all the electrical connections and hoses and anything else that might be connected uh, so that it can all be dropped out the bottom. I need to uh, disconnect the battery cable. Now it does disconnect on the engine, but that end is kind of yucky. So I'll probably end up doing something with this. And I'll take the fastener that I took out and just sort of loosely thread it back into place so that I can find it later. Regular viewers will know that I hate these freaking battery cables. And if you want to know why, I'll link the video down in the description. But I intend to get rid of this. And it's actually going to make life a little bit easier since uh, all I'll need to do is disconnect a few of these wires here. And I won't have to worry about them when I uh, drop the engine and transmission. That makes it so that pretty much all the battery stuff 
And there's one more connector here. I'm gonna disconnect the throttle cables. Not something I normally do. Uh, these are 12 millimeter, but I like to adjust them when I get a new car anyway, especially one with a lot of miles like this one, uh, cause they get a little bit of slack in them and you can actually get a little bit of a better throttle response by doing this. One of these, this one actually is the cruise control and the other is the actual throttle. Penetrating oil is your friend. The way you have to do this is you have to run this front nut all the way down. There's a space. You run it down past that space and then you'll be able to pull the throttle cable back through. So these little barrel connections slide into a slot. On there you just slide it out and it's yours. And this back one is going to be for the actual throttle. Back here are the fuel line connections, and these are somewhat old school. Um, like it has this vacuum pressure regulator for one. Uh, anyway, there it has a return line. The newer ones have a returnless system. But this is the older one, so move that clamp back. And that one. And the supply. This is actually a fuel pulsator, so it's like a shock absorber for the pulses that the fuel pump makes to smooth things out. Um, you actually remove it to get the uh, banjo fitting off of the supply line. I believe it is a 17 millimeter, but right behind that, as long as I got the pliers in my hand, is the EVAP line, I believe this is. No, that supply is a 19, not a 17. Okay, <laughs> maybe 22. It is 22. So 22 millimeter on that pulsator. And there's a washer under it that you do not want to lose. There are a couple washers on either side of that fuel line. This one stayed put. I'm just gonna thread this back down on here so I don't lose the washers or the pulsator. And I know where it goes. Looks like there's a vacuum line up here. We're going to the brake booster and then we have that giant harness that we connected on the inside. Take care of the vacuum line first. And this is something somebody added that, uh, well, this is how I'm gonna deal with it. Yep. G-Force, performance chips, whatever that means. So it was tied into the air temperature sensor. Main harness unclips up here. And where the harness passes through the firewall or bulkhead, there are two 10 millimeter uh, nuts on studs. You loosen them, you don't have to take them all the way out, and then you can take this whole thing, turn it counterclockwise, and pull it up off of here. I think it's awesome how my light just loves to act like it's helping, but it's not really helping. Got ourselves a harness. Yay. That's taking care of just about everything over there. And now I'm moving over to this side and I wanna drain the power steering fluid and I'm gonna use uh, my, I've got a special thing for that. I'll show it to you. Anyway, I'm gonna drain it out of the reservoir here. Here's my fluid extractor. It's great for jobs just like this. And I, I recently started using this and it does help gut down on the mess a great deal. I'll link it in the description. I will take the dipstick out and put this on the bench because this little plastic piece is super easy to break. Don't ask me how I know. Haha, -ha, that should help with the mess. Also linked in the description. More electrical stuff over here. Uh, you'll note this line goes down to the alternator. There's a couple different ways we can do this. We can go to the back of the alternator and disconnect things or we can disconnect things here inside the fuse box. I'm opting for this since it's easier. I do have to unclip the harness in a couple of spots though. And while I'm here, I'm gonna check something. Uh, the AC in this did not work. And it'll be actually helpful if it's drained out as there's nothing in a system. And 
there's nothing in that system. So with that completely empty, I can disconnect the AC compressor with confidence. I don't have to worry about that. But I do have recovery equipment if that was necessary. But it's not, so that's one step. We don't have to worry about it. But if you are doing this, you might consider going to a shop, having them evacuate your AC system before you start. And that way, when you go to remove things, you don't have to worry about venting it all to the atmosphere. So under this little cover, you'll see two electrical connections. And one of those goes to the alternator. It's an eight millimeter or uh, it can be a Phillips head as well, but I recommend the eight millimeter. And boom, that electrical connection is done and you don't need to worry about it. I'm gonna take the fastener and just thread it back into its spot. With the exception of those radiator hoses that I mentioned, we're done up here. I already mentioned the missing splash shield. Uh, to deal with that, a little WD-40 on the clips, and this is the tool that I use to uh, undo those clips. I'll link that down in the description to make it easy for you to find. You probably also noticed that I have a new exhaust on here. Previously, you might remember that it was all one piece, all welded together. I didn't want that. Uh, so I got a new front pipe here and a new catalytic converter and I welded a flange on back here so that, uh, well, it could be serviced like a normal exhaust now. So that's all been taken care of. But now I'm gonna go around drain fluids, engine oil, transmission fluid, uh, disconnect axles, everything else. Well, you'll see. Transmission drain plug is right here. Uh, it's just a regular 3 8 ratchet size. So all you need is a 3 8 ratchet. Wow, never had one on there that was welded like this. I need a 3 8 breaker bar, that's what I need. I hate breaking things loose with this ratchet, but it's a long ratchet, it's one of my favorites. I'll also link it for you. Ew, <laughs> like, ew. I think this transmission was changed out at one time based on what I've seen uh, from some of the fasteners and clips and stuff but I would wager that it hasn't been serviced since. <laughs> I'm not even gonna wipe off the goo. I'm just gonna leave it on there for the rebuilder to see. I'm sure they'll find some smoked clutches amongst other things in there. And now for the oil. Oil doesn't look as bad as the transmission fluid, but given this was a recent used car purchase, I wouldn't be surprised if they changed it. Oh, wow. So whoever put that oil filter on really wanted it to stay on. You do not need to do that at all. <laughs> In fact, I try to do it so that I can undo it by hand. As long as it's not leaking, you're good. No double gasket. Not worried about cleaning up the subframe so much because that's coming out. Given all the work that I've done in the back, the plan is to recondition it before it goes back in. So it'll get a pressure wash and a degreasing and a painting before it goes back together. Here's one you don't want to forget. So on the high pressure power steering line, there's an electrical connector. You need to disconnect it because it's not part of the harness or anything. So make sure that you do that before you drop anything out of here. I'm putting a new crush washer on this. Again, you don't have to over tighten it, just snug it up. And now for the fun one, the coolant. So right up here, right up there you can kind of see it. That is the drain for the radiator. So you got to undo that and it should drain out somewhere around here. Also removing the radiator cap helps it drain better. I didn't think that was going to happen. Not based on some of the stuff I've seen so far.
In addition to the missing splash shield, there's also a missing brace that normally goes here. I removed it to replace the exhaust and since the engine and transmission was coming out and the exhaust was coming back out, there was no point in putting it back in. But normally there are four fasteners holding on a brace underneath here that needs to be removed. Well, I think we're done draining. <clears throat> At least this part of it. I'm gonna pull the lower radiator hose off since I wanted to do that anyway and see if there's any more in there. There's something of a mess happening up here with the transmission cooler lines. Uh, in my mind, they're not hooked up correctly because they don't utilize the radiator transmission cooler. Some people said that sometimes they leak internally. I haven't seen that, but I will check it and make sure it's not leaking. That's a handy tool. It's just for uh, hose clamps like that. I'll link it in the description. It's gonna let that drain while I take care of other stuff. Other things like the exhaust, which I forgot to there is a plug for the O2 sensor that's like way up here in the back. I should have gotten it from up top, but it's for the rear O2 sensor. There it is. I also forgot about this other O2 sensor. I'm just gonna do what I did last time and just unscrew it. I'll unhook this and put it in properly afterwards. Well, I almost caught it in my safety glasses. And normally there's this bracket that holds it to the subframe. Both of those bolts broke on me. So I have this pair of vice grips in there. But you would normally have two of those fasteners to undo. I'm pretty sure that the subframe is going to miss this catalytic converter. But given that I didn't put a gasket in and it's so easy to get off, I'm just going to take it off. Let's get this drive shaft undone. I'm going to mark it so I can get it back on here the way it came off. I do the dots in case the marker goes away. Actually, this whole piece is going to go away, so this doesn't matter. So this, this piece here is going to be replaced. These are 14. And I'd forgotten I'd left this thing in neutral. Give me my socket back. I think that'll be okay. I'm just gonna have to be mindful. The stabilizer bar is right above it. As I lower it, or as I raise the body up, I'll be mindful of this. All right, now this guy. These are also 14 millimeter. I'm just trying to leave them all where they came out of. Needs a little help from a pry bar to ensure that it doesn't drop on the floor. I'm gonna thread that guy in, just a couple of threads. That's all you need is one. It should keep it from dropping out completely. Whoa! Yeah, I should have expected that. That's why I keep oil dry like at the ready, especially when doing jobs like this. There's a series of 12 millimeter fasteners holding this lower plate on. Longer ones go here and here. What the heck happened there? By the looks of it, somebody screwed up big time and they've got this thing all rigged and it almost looks like this is gonna cost me a shift cable and I am not happy about that because that's gonna be expensive and I have to do a lot more work to replace it. Way to go whoever put this thing in. And here's the other thing about this. 
This not being in here correctly could make it so that when you put it in gear, it's not in gear and therefore it could burn up clutches. So I've got to fix this. <sighs> Holy crap. So they did completely cheese this whole thing. You know, I wondered why the shifter felt weird. So it looks like this is frozen and doesn't pivot. That's what it looks like. Let's get this guy off now that we're finished draining over there and see if we can't figure this out. If I can figure it out and I can weld it, great. If not, well, I better be ordering a cable. Oh yeah, that works fine. The way this is supposed to come out is you undo this 10 millimeter right here. And then there's, there's a bracket that's bent over the outside of it that you need to open up. So you open up that bracket, remove that 10 millimeter, and then you'll be able to slide this off of here. But you also need to slide this one out. So this whole mechanism, you know, this convoluted kind of looking thing, uh, once this other pin comes out, this whole thing should come off of here. I've gone up top and put it in park. You know what? I think this will work better on the bench. So that should come out like that. Uh, 10 holds the rest in. Don't forget to bend back that washer. Or that weird little thing. Take this whole thing off. That's how it should happen. If this won't come loose and pivot like it's supposed to, well, I'm gonna have to give up the ghost. Huh, my vice jaws need to be tightened up. It is moving nicely. Like it's gonna work nicely. Yeah, that's, that's freed up. We just covered this thing in penetrating oil, which is flammable. And I'm about to do welding, which is pretty much electric fire. So it'd be a good idea to get this cleaned up so that we don't have a small fire on our hands. Also, I wanna do what I can to like hit this with a wire brush to try to clean it up as much as possible so that uh, that is also uh, ready to weld. I've straightened this cable out as much as I could. It was a little bent. Now I need to do the same treatment to this. Well, that might just work, like just. I'll tack it while it's up in the air like this. And I'll undo it and uh, do the rest on the ground. Speaking of ground, I'm contemplating where I can put it. Yeah, it looks like that's gonna be it, but I don't wanna move this around too much. I want it to be in a neutral position when I weld it. Now that I have it started, I'm gonna take it off of this and weld it down here. There's just two more fasteners back here that hold it. It's a little blackened up, so I'm gonna hit it with the wire wheel before I finish welding it. It's rather precarious at the moment, but I'll finish it up. Let's see if that works. The welds weren't quite penetrating to uh, my liking, so I went back and redid some. Unfortunately, what happened was, is I ended up hitting this outside piece here. Now, I could have gone through and knocked this pin out and welded this properly. That probably would have been the way to do it, but no, well, I did it like this. It seems to articulate and move, so now the plan is to put it all back together, jump back up inside the vehicle, 
and uh, well, see if it shifts. All right then, the shift interlock is engaged and we can't move it out of park because the battery's not connected. You know, normally you have to put your foot on the brake in order to move the gear lever. Well, all you've got to do is there's a little plastic uh, cover on top of the steering column that you remove and that will disengage the uh, shifter on this one. So just uh, remove that plastic cover, insert the key and you'll be able to shift. So far, you seem to have a full range and honestly, it feels, it feels better than it did. It felt I felt that slack that was in there before. Well, I'm gonna call that mischief managed and move on to the next thing. I find the exhaust to be a convenient place to store the shift cable. In my view, there's gonna be no better time to deal with the torque converter bolts. They are behind this cover. There are two 10 millimeters, one here and one up underneath that need to be removed. And I believe there are eight 10 millimeters that hold the flex plate to the back of the torque converter. Uh, in order to rotate things around, I'm going to put a ratchet with a 19 millimeter on the end of this uh, so that I can rotate the engine and get all those fasteners in position. We'll rotate the engine clockwise, which is the normal direction of rotation. fluids for the most part except for the one power steering line up here oh you know what let's since they're right here and easy to get to remove these two 14s and I'm keeping these with all of the torque converter fasteners so that I remember that it went here also because it's easy to get to now I'm going to be replacing all of the engine mounts thanks to anchor industries they sent me all the engine mounts for this the front one I think is leaking we'll get a better look at that soon Anyway, there are four fasteners that hold this rear engine mount down. My thought was is I could break everything loose now and again, make it easier later on. Yeah, there's something up top on that one. Now I'm gonna disconnect the lines from the AC compressor and remember that the uh, there's no coolant in this, or no refrigerant, I should say. There are two 10 millimeter fasteners that hold these lines in. And I think before all is said and done, it's probably a good idea to replace the O-rings on these when you reassemble it. One is a bolt and one is a nut. They're both 10 millimeter. See, if there was stuff in there, we would know it right now. I'm gonna find some corks and plug all these off. Last thing you wanna do is contaminate the AC system while you're working. There is a power steering cooler line right here. Don't be surprised if you have to replace that clamp. I'll let that drain for a moment, but I find the best uh, plug for this is an old spark plug. And that should keep it from dripping everywhere. The Honda did something on these stabilizer links, on these and the MDXs that I don't understand why they didn't do it on the other ones. And that is they put a nut on the back side. This whole thing with the Allen wrench, I think that's total BS because anytime I've tried to do that, it just rounds it out. Anyway, the nut on the back is a 19 millimeter. The uh, thing on the front is a 17. Hopefully this works. I'm replacing these, by the way. And you probably should plan to also. And if I have to, I'll just blast it with a torch and say, ha ha, there you go. Just like that, I'll say, ha ha, there you go. I'm hoping it doesn't come to that though. I'm hoping we can come to an agreement here. Haha, ha, take that. 
not even going to waste my time with this side. Ha ha, you can take that too. As long as I'm here, I might as well do the axle nut. It's 36 millimeter. And take these off on both sides. Axles have to come out. If these get stuck inside the uh, hub, take the nut, put it back on like, well, you usually can't put them on backwards. You're probably gonna need a new one of these nuts. But put it on the end just like that. Put a little penetrating oil down in there and you can hit on the axle nut. That way you don't mushroom the end of the axle, which will make it problematic trying to reinstall the nut later. And now for the tie rod ends and ball joints. And I wasn't considering replacing these tie rod ends, but maybe now, because those boots looked pretty wrecked. It'll get new cotter pins, except for the ball joint cotter pins. Well, I might have one of those left over, but these usually have a special cotter pin, but it's gone missing here. 19 or 17, 19. The ball joint is also 19. And I might recommend disconnecting the tie rods before you knock the ball joint loose. That way you don't move the power steering rack, which I did just a little bit. Now that could affect the alignment when I try to put it back together. It's gonna to get an alignment no matter what, because I did a bunch of work in the back that's gonna require that. But I'm also doing work up here that's also gonna necessitate an alignment. Point being, if you're trying to maintain your alignment, knock this loose first before you go here to the lower ball joint. You might remember those ball joints were completely wasted. In fact, I think these things were one pothole away from going completely bye-bye. So I built, we'll be replacing them. Actually, I'm replacing the entire Loa control arm assembly to deal with the bushings. See, look how bad this ball joint is. It's not even come loose yet. And that's, that's how much movement there is. And you can feel it when you drive it too. The front end is loose as a goose. I'm like, really? You're gonna laugh at me after that? I don't think so. Yep, the big one. That's the one you want. Now I'm gonna be replacing struts and other stuff, but I can deal with that after the rest of this mess is out here. I think I also mentioned that I'm replacing these lower control arms. They're attached to the uh, subframe here and here. Now what I'm doing now is just breaking things loose so that when it's on the ground and on my cart, it will uh, easily come loose without me having to fight it a lot. The less struggling I need to do with this subframe on the ground, the better, because that could off balance it. Just these two fasteners, they're 19s. One more thing while we're on this side, the transmission is supported by two lower mounts, one here and one in the back over there above the control arm. There are four 14 millimeter fasteners that you can access through these openings that need to be removed. Gravity's holding it in place, uh, but I'll take them out now to make it easier so I don't have to get underneath it while it's down on the ground. Doing an encore show over here. Yes, that is the type of cotter pin that I like to see. This is the kind of cotter pin I really like. Reusable and stays put. That's what they come on original equipment. I'm gonna say that that probably moved the steering wheel also. So we can attempt to put the steering wheel in a certain spot, but it seems that that's all we can really do is make an attempt. You might have seen the power steering juice squirt out from up here when I did that. Shot my little blue cover off too. So that little blue thing I had shot off the end and some of the juice came out. Is 
it time? Might be time. Here's something critically important that's worth mentioning, and that is if you are using a lift like I am to perform this procedure and drop the engine and transmission out of the front of the vehicle, know that you're gonna be removing a significant amount of weight from there. That means if the vehicle is not on the lift balanced properly, that removing all that weight could make it so that it wants to tip off the lift. So be very mindful of this before you perform this procedure and make sure that you're secure on the lift and also keep an eye on things as you're raising the vehicle to make sure that you don't have an issue with too much weight on the back and not enough on the front. That could be catastrophic. Be safe. The subframe is held in at four points. Here's one in the front and then there's these two that go to this bracket. Here's another one in the front that goes here. In the rear, we have this and this, and again on this side, same thing. Those are all the things that have to come out in order to drop this down. I have this guy right here to drop it down onto. Let's try that out. I do need to disconnect the upper radiator hose. Um, if I don't do that, there'll be trouble. And it also looks like there's another ground right here that I should also disconnect. Well, looks like it's been pre-disconnected. You know what else I almost forgot, which I should probably address right now? Those heater hoses. We cannot forget about those. Gently do this so that you don't damage the hose. Of course. Oh yeah, it found its way everywhere. It went all over the transmission, all over everything to find its way to the ground instead of in that pan. I always try to keep it clean, but I have yet to succeed with doing this and having a clean floor at the end. It's, well, difficult. Maybe it's best if I disconnect the upper radiator hose here at the engine. I think I said lower hose, I meant upper. And now that ground that should have been attached. Looks like we'll have to do some electrical repairs. In addition to dropping the cradle underneath, there's these two 14s that I'll need to remove uh, for this side engine mount in order to uh, drop this out. But I'm gonna wait until I get the support underneath there to do that. Okay, let's do this. I love how this thing rolls. These were ex Expensive wheels. Very expensive, actually. So far, worth it. This cart is either going to work fabulous or fail miserably. I'm hoping for the former. Let's do this. Well, that mount's wasted. Good thing we got new ones. All these under here are 17. Well, hopefully that's not a prelude to everything else. Now I'm staying well out from underneath any of this if it decides to go sideways, literally. the last one has to be cross-threaded. Really, you had to do that to me. You freaking had to do that. The last stinking bolt. Oh, 
Yeah, they didn't do me any favors on that one. Here's what's left of that bolt. <sighs> Thanks, previous mechanic. Jerk. Here's that moment <sighs> we've all been waiting for. Slowly. <laughs> clear. Uh, we need to clear the drive shaft though. That guy's about to be a problem. Oh, I love this cart. I love it. the AC lines are good. Sadly, I forgot to disconnect the AC compressor. Oh, darn it. That's okay. The connector came apart and I can repair it. That's on me. I should have remembered to do it while I was up there doing the lines, but I forgot. But otherwise, it's out of here. <laughs> That is officially out of there. Oh yeah, I love it. I love it. it Move so easy, so easy. Anywhere I want it. Huh, I love it, I love it, I love it. Viewers, that's gonna conclude the removal of the engine transmission and front sub assembly of this 2003 Honda Pilot. And I think you will agree, the hero of this story is that flipping cart that I made. That thing is fantastic and I absolutely love it. I'll post the link in the description to its construction so you can get more detail about that. But I've gotta say, it made this job so much easier. Uh, those of you that watch my show regularly might have seen when I did a very similar thing to a 2005 Honda Odyssey and I used jack stands at that instance. And it worked, but it was a lot more cumbersome. It was nothing, it was night and day. This cart made a huge difference. So check that video out if you wanna see how that was all put together. You've probably also noticed that I have done some things since removing the engine and transmission and subassembly from the Honda Pilot, which is replacing the transmission. I've also reconditioned that subframe. I also replaced the front struts, the wheel bearings, uh, did some painting on the uh, front suspension, the knuckles and all that other stuff. Whole host of the front tires, all things that will be covered in future videos, rest assured. And when those videos become available, I'll either link them in the description or this will all be a part of the uh, hashtag ETCG hack hawk project. You might remember that what I'm gonna do with this after I finish doing all this work is strap a supercharger on top of that uh, J series engine and well, see what happens. But for now, we're gonna get it all fixed up and well, basically hit the reset button on all of it. So stay tuned for those future videos. If uh, you have automotive questions that weren't covered in this video, I ask that you head to ericthecarguide.com. That will be linked in the description along with parts, tools, additional stuff. So check the description for additional information. Stop back on Friday because that's when I post Eric the Car Guy videos. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching today. I will see you next time.